Where are you going to be when Peppermania comes for thee? Here we go. Take four. All right. So we're back with Nature's Edge. Of course, it's part of the uh, Apocalypse Care Package. Heirloom Seeds, USA Grown, non-GMO. Still thinking about buying a GMO purple tomato just because. And, I mean, would it really be pepper mania without bringing up the one hot pepper that everybody knows better than any? And that's the humble jalapeno. And these aren't the mammoths. They're nothing, I mean, super special. They are just baseline jalapeno. But I will say these are some of my most prolific producers. Like, I love my jalapenos. Not as much as my Serranos. Just gonna put it out there. But these just have a really great flavor and they're so versatile and you can just use them in all sorts of different ways. They're not as high in the capacin, capacin, proposin, something like that, as you know, your cayenne peppers, but they're not as hot. So Serranos, they're about the same. So heart healthy. So jalapenos are obviously on the hotter side when it comes to peppers. They're between 2,000, 5,000 on the Scoville unit. Scoville scale, bro. They're gonna be about three inches long and about one inch across in about 70 to 80 days. So, I mean, it's got a pretty quick harvest time. And these littler ones, like I said, they don't take as long. But I will say, when these little suckers turn red, they're warm. Like my little baby ones, that I like for my spreads and stuff and for hot sauce because I ain't got to mess with all them seeds. They're pretty fantastic and they're pretty warm. But when I let these little suckers turn black and red, they got real hot, real fast. It was a good time. And I made heck of cut cowboy candy or candied jalapenos out of these. So I'm just saying definitely a must have. So your germ rate is going to be about 7 to 21 days. I said germ rate. I meant germ time is going to be about 7 to 21 days. Of course, they like it to be above 70 degrees. I kept these alive up to 60, about 60 degrees last year, but they started slowing down on production. And about, I'd say, 45, 50 degrees, they started dying off. Uh, I tried to overwinter them. Uh, definitely need more research into that before I can really have any type of opinion, but I'm super hopeful that this year, whenever I do dig one of these up, that it is going to uh, really make a difference for next season's pepper production. I'll still do the same, you know, three plants, but I'm going to do one that is overwintered and see if its production is actually quite a bit more than my fresh seedlings each year. Which, overwintering, I would suggest more for, you know, peppers that are a little more expensive or, you know, isn't so common, I guess. So, I mean, that would still probably fall into expensive. But, you know, a pepper plant that you really can't just immediately get, you're going to want to overwinter. So, that would be my suggestion for that because I didn't realize how much work actually went into that until I tried it with the Wonder Bell uh, yeah, the Wonder Bell, the Jalapeno, and the Serrano. And I killed all of them. So, I'm not the best one for advice for that anyway. Not yet. Give me a little bit. So, you're going to want to sow these about a quarter inch deep. Which, is per usual, just punch the little hole. And then you're going to want to thin these to about 12 to 18 inches apart. Uh, like I said, I'm planning on doing about a three foot spacing on these this year. So, that's about how wide they got last year. And I had a lot of issues with like stepping on them, breaking them, you know, so on and so forth, trying to squeeze in between those little one foot rows. Wasn't very happy with myself or the way it kind of worked last year. But if you plan for more of a vertical grow, I think you'd be okay doing like one foot. But I personally would say I wouldn't go less than two foot. And since I like to have room to work, I'm going with three foot. And then my cross rows are actually quite a bit more than that. I think they're like three, four foot in between each row. So I'm going to have plenty of room to work. And they're going to have plenty of room to grow. Because I did notice in the tighter section that there was a lot more disease and a lot more uh, pest. 
which we're going to cover how I got rid of all that and dealt with almost all of that pretty quickly. So you're going to want to start the seeds four to six weeks in advance of your last frost, which it's March 21st. Our last frost date is projected to be April 20th. So, I mean, I'm right there at the line. I might be a little late to the party, but I still think these are going to do really great because I did start these last year earlier than I am this year. I did it by the exact number, and I noticed that they were getting a little root bound. So, hopefully, giving myself a little bit more time, maybe they won't get so root bound and maybe they'll do better. Uh, I do the cups because the little pots, the little fabric pots, you know, you put them in the water and they expand. Um, I had a lot of plants that I pulled last year that did not break out of that pod. So if you do use them, make sure you cut the netting off of them because if not, you're going to hinder your plant's growth. Same thing with the biodegradable cups. I reuse the plastic party cups from our birthdays and stuff like that. I reuse the cups every year until I completely crush them, trying to get the peppers out of them or any peppers, tomatoes, okra, peas, you know, so on and so forth, everything that I grow. Except for I have an experiment I'm running right now that, that I am doing in seed cells. But that's just because I want to see how Happy Farm... Oh man, why do I do that every time? Fox Farm Happy Frogs does versus Fairy Morse pre-filled seed starting trays. So, and I did watch Pepper Geek and his production on those were a lot better than... Or for Happy Fox Farms, Happy Frog was a lot better than some of the other situations. The only thing I can say is miracle Grow Pro produced larger peppers, but not as many. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. You're gonna wanna place two to three seeds a quarter inch deep in these cups. So I just put them in there, cover them. Go ahead and give them a little, little sippy sip. Make sure you go easy on the water, because if you flood them, it might move your seeds to the side of the cup and that's a hassle that you don't want to deal with. And I do not pack these down. I leave them loose and then I let the water do what it needs to do. And then I just kind of float around the cup and just barely add enough water until I see everything sinking. And then the nice thing about these trays is I can legit watch the water come out the bottom because once I'm done watering them this way, I won't water them this way anymore. It'll all be from underneath watering. Then you're going to want to transplant these when they have two sets of true leaves and the soil temperature is above 70 degrees, which, like I said, they're a little bit... I lost my scissors. Take five. Yeah, so I accidentally put those away for once. I actually put something away and then I actually still needed it. But we're going to go ahead, cut our saran wrap, like so. Nothing fancy, quick snip. Now something I did see and I tried and it actually did work pretty well on my uh, okra and everything else before I started really getting all my seeds started was just taking more cups and just sticking them right on top. Uh, that worked out pretty well. I mean, I'm not even gonna deny it. It was pretty cool. I didn't like how tall it was because this is a little more efficient. And you definitely have to watch these because you do not want these plants rubbing up against the saran wrap. That's why I loose pack them so that way whenever the soil settles, it gives me about an inch from the top lip. Works out pretty smoothly. And like I said, my production has been, since I started trying it this way versus the more commercial, conventional ways that I've seen, this always seems to produce a lot more, so I'm gonna stick with this until I find something better, I guess. I like watching a lot of YouTube videos on how to garden. Been watching uh, Paul Stingray's gardens. He's got hydroponics and aquaponics, and he's really got me sitting here thinking about maybe uh, spending some more money on different setups than the ones I already have. We got jalapenos, 321, 24. Yet again, for whatever reason, I do not think as I'm prepping to write the names of these. 
before I start the video. Whoa, why did I do that? The mic is off. You know, I hope that mic wasn't dead this whole time. I do not want to do this again. <sighs> it's the hard not life for us. 321-24. Alright. Final frost date, April 20th. Hope these little suckers get massive. If you like the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.